Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For today's episode, we will be looking at the topic of the step of death. If you have your Old Testaments with you, turn to 1 Samuel 20 in verse 3. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knows that I have found grace in your eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. Saul here is going, is chasing David, is about to chase David, and he's wanting to kill him. David says, there's a step between me and death. This could be taken two ways. This could be taken to say that Saul is powerful enough that all David has to do is take a wrong step, and he dies. There is a step between him and death. There's also, it could be taken another way, that Jonathan is that step. That Jonathan is the protection between Saul and David. But either way, you could, you, David says that there is a step of death. There is a step of death. The meaning of the word death is separation. There were many examples of death in the Bible. And there are five ways the word death is used. First of all, it is used when it refers to dead to the law of Moses. In Galatians chapter 2, in Galatians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 19. Galatians 2 verse 19. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. If we are dead to the law of Moses, we do not follow the law of Moses anymore. Those who want to follow the law of Moses are alive to the law of Moses and dead unto Christ. What Paul said he was dead to the law of Moses because he wanted to be alive in Christ. I might live unto God. We are separated from the law of Moses now. We are no longer under under it. So let's not try to put ourselves under bondage. That's one type of death. We also read uh, of death uh, in becoming a sinner. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, "And And you hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. When we sin, we separate ourselves from God. We die. That's exactly what God told Adam and Eve would happen when or if they eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In that day you shall die. Satan lied to Eve, playing on the double meaning of death. We think of death as physical death, and we'll get to that in a minute. But death that God was talking about was spiritual death. When we sin, we die. It is a separation between God and man. We also uh, die when we become a child of God. How do we do this? Well, Romans uh, chapter 6, verses, uh, we'll start reading at verse 1. We become dead to sin. What shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin, dead to sin, live any longer in it? Know ye not that if many of you as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. People who want to talk about baptism not being necessary, well then we haven't died to sin. We haven't been raised to walk in newness of life. That's what baptism itself represents. It is necessary. Because otherwise, we haven't died to sin. We haven't buried sin. We haven't been raised to walk in newness of life. Christ died for sins, was buried in the earth, and was raised never to die again. We need to be baptized. But when uh, to be saved... We need to die to sin. In becoming a child of God, we die to sin. The fourth type uh, of, of way that death is used is the most commonly used way when we talk about death. It is separating of the body from the spirit. In James chapter 2, in James chapter 2, we read at verse 26, 
for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This death we see every day. When someone dies, we're left with the body, but the person is not there. The spirit is returned to God who gave it. That is the fourth type of physical uh, of, of death. And the last type of death is the second death. This is referred to in Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, we read it verses 12 to 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found, uh, who's, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This separation is the separating from the, uh, of the spirit from God in hell. This is the second death. This is a death that we, if we partake in it, will never come back from. Never. Eternally separated from God. Those are the five deaths that we read of uh, in, the, in the Bible. The five real ways death is used. So what are some things that we can learn about this phrase, the step of death? Well, we learn, for one, the brevity of life. In James chapter 4, in James chapter 4, uh, we read uh, at verse 14. So let's go to James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. In the grand scheme of things, we live at a maximum 80 to 100 years. That's not very long. Some people live and are never known by many other people except their closest friends. And there are others that will live, that could live in history. But even those who live in history, the further away we go, the less they are remembered. Our lives are fragile. They appear for a little bit and then are gone. That should tell us that we need to obey Christ now. Because we do not know what the, what the moral may bring. The step of death teaches us that we have a sure step. That it is a sure step. As sure as man lives, men will die. Everyone here on this earth has known someone who's died, who has died. Whether it's a loved one, a friend, or someone else. It is a sure step. In 1 Corinthians 15... Verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We all die as a consequence for Adam's sin. Physically, we all die. But in Christ shall all be made alive. Those are those who obey him. That's a spiritual alive. But it is a sure step. Everyone faces it. It is an appointed step. Hebrews 9, verse 27, For as it is appointed to day, uh, for is appointed unto man once to die. God has appointed us a day. Does that mean that it, it is whatever date on the calendar? No. That's not what that means. But, as long as this earth shall live, we have an appointed day of death because we do not have access to the tree of life. So it is an appointed step. So we have a sure step, an appointed step. It is a separating step. It separates the spirit from the body. And it separates us from our loved ones here on this earth. We do not come back and roam this earth as ghosts and spirits. We do not visit the living. The dead are separated from this realm from this physical realm and are kept in weight of judgment. Moreover, death, this step of death is a final step. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, which is the verse that we just quoted, let's go back and reread the entire thing. So we get, 
the whole meaning. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, we've left out the last phrase earlier, but after this, the judgment. Death will be the vehicle we will leave this earth on, and after that, and after that, we can no longer change our lives. Our story is written. Our judgment awaits. Our judgment awaits. What will that judgment be? The song says, Someday you'll stand at the bar on high. Someday your record you'll see. Someday you'll answer the question of life. What will your answer be? You get to write your story while you're here on this earth. But once you take that step of death, that final step, judgment comes. The judgment day awaits, and we will be judged according to what we have done. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you can hear the word of God. Believe it and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Searching the Scriptures has been brought to you by the East End Church of Christ, which meets at 3601 Victoria Park Avenue, Suite 200, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our hours of service are Sunday at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 11 a.m. for morning worship, as well as Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. If you have any Bible questions that you would like to have answered during this podcast, or if you have any general comments about what you've heard today, you may email them to Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. That's Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to catch up on any episode that you missed, you will find them at www.eastendchurch.org under the podcast tab found on the main page. I hope you found the few minutes that we spent together today useful in expanding your knowledge of what the Bible teaches. Please join me, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will be discussing more of what the Bible says. Until you listen again, keep searching the scriptures to learn what God wants you to do. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.